Hey folks, welcome back to My Kitten Reads. I'm Eleanor and this is my March reading wrap up. I'm running a little bit late on it. I've had a bad shoulder all weekend, unfortunately, um, which has kept me a bit restricted, but it's starting to feel better. So I'm doing a video. Um, no physical books this for March. Um, March was a bit, was difficult. I've mentioned in a previous, previous video, my grandmother passed away. She was ill for a bit before that. It was very stressful. So unsurprisingly, most of my reading is either comfort rereads or gym related, to be honest. Um, stuff that I read on my Kindle when, when I'm at the gym. Uh, so, but I did read, I think, eight things. Yes, eight things. Eight, seven or eight. Seven things, seven things, okay. So thankfully I was a little bit ahead of myself in the first two months of the year, so I'm still pretty much on target with my goals, but I read seven things uh, in um, March. Yes. Uh, so what did I read? Well, I read Uncanny Magazine issue 32. Uh, so I often read Uncanny Magazine at the gym because it's on my Kindle, and I'm quite behind, uh, but I have at least now started last year's issues, and I've gotten through a few. So... That was issue 32, where I think their most recently released one is issue 39. Um, but yes, the, the two, there were two stories that kind of caught my attention enough that I actually remember them fairly clearly. Um, Badass Mums of the Zombie Apocalypse by Ray Carson, which essentially explored the idea of being a female of reproductive age when you're surrounded by zombies that can smell blood. So, and the utter risk that having children is, and giving birth, the actual act of giving birth is such a risk. When you've got zombies, that can smell blood. Uh, yeah. So, but it was really well written and it was really an interesting new way of looking at zombies. Um, and at what comes with being female and particularly what comes with female reproduction. Um... So that was really interesting. And also uh, there was one story called And All the Trees of the Forest Shall Clap Their Hands by Sharon Tew, which is sort of Narnia gone wrong. So it was from the perspective of a, a dryad, a tree, um, who had welcomed someone, a child had come through from England, through a door, into their land, had been taken in, been made a king, that kind of thing, but it went wrong. And essentially what happened was this perfect land with dryads and fawns and all these kind of things, like Narnia, was basically had all of its resources ripped out of it um, and sold in England to enrich, um, to enrich uh, the child that came through. Um, there were some also some quite darker things. There's a little bit of a should probably should warn for incest. <laughs> um, not like graphic or anything, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of taken. It's it's very clearly looking at Narnia and going, this could have gone so 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 wrong. Um, and essentially, in the end, the dryad takes revenge for. The land, like it never actually specifically says Narnia, but it is a distinctly Narnian scenario. Um, so yeah, that really caught my attention because I do like the Chronicles of Narnia, but yeah, this is taking the Chronicles of Narnia and going, that could have gone really wrong. <laughs> so that was a really good one as well. Then I reread Whispers of the Heart by Jan Rowland, which is Jan Rowland. Pride and Prejudice uh, sort of reboot in this in this particular one. Bingley was with Darcy when Ramsgate happened and offered to marry Georgiana to save her reputation. Um, and so that's the point where the story starts, um, which of course makes things very different when they meet the Bennet sisters because Bingley's already married and he's not going to fall in love with Jane. So, and yeah, and, and Darcy's in a very different mood. Uh, so yeah, there was that. Then All That This Entails by Noel Chesney. Uh, this is one that, this is the first time it's on this list because I've previously read it as, multiple times as fanfic. 
but it has now been published. Um, and I really, really love this one. Again, it's a Pride and Prejudice reboot in that due to uh, a rift in the family, um, it turns out Mr. Bennett is actually descended from a duke uh, a couple of generations, but there was a rift in the family and uh, he was on, on, on the junior side of the family. Unfortunately, all the other side of the family has now passed away and he's accidentally inherited a dukedom. <laughs> and that, of course, very much changes the circumstances of the Bennets. So uh, I really enjoy that one. Uh, then I read Uncanny Magazine issue 33. I have been to the gym a lot. Uh, basically, it's kind of easy to run out my feelings. Um, so issue 33, there was one story I picked out from this that stuck with me, and that is The Sycamore and the Sybil by Alex E. Harrow. Um, this is kind of from the, again, it's from the perspective of a tree. Um, in this case, is a tree that used to be a woman, but turned herself into a woman after she was forced to marry um, someone who assaulted her, um, and she used a word of power to turn herself into a tree, and now she's watching this other girl who's going through the same thing, who is assaulted, um, and who is then forced to marry and carry children for the man that assaulted her, and so she does her best to give the words of power to this other woman, but actually, because she's got all this memory going back to all the witches before her, um, she actually manages to twist it and give this woman power to take her revenge rather than actually turn herself into um, a tree. And then also the sycamore manages to turn herself, I think she I think she manages to turn herself back into a woman at some stage at the end. But yeah, so again, it was a story about assault um, and power um, with just a little bit of magic and a little bit of tree. Uh, so there was that. Then I reread The Blackmail Blend by Livia Day, which is the, I'm not sure if it's a novelette or a novella, but it's in the uh, Café La Femme series um, of crime novels set in Tasmania. So this is uh, not quite a murder, but almost a murder and some blackmailing going on involving tea. So <laughs> tea and romance writers. So um, that was a nice short read and I was really pleased to reread that. <coughs> Then I reread The Companion of His Future Life by Jack Caldwell, which is one of the first Jane Austen pieces of fanfic that I had read as fanfic and then it got published and so it got taken down and so it became one of the first variation paid novels I ever read. Um, I hadn't read it in ages actually, but this is one where there's a slight incident that turns the turn fate and instead of asking Lizzie to marry him, Mr. Collins goes for Mary and Mary says yes. And therefore Mary is on the moves to Hunsford and so both Elizabeth and Jane visit Mary. Uh, Mary is made friends with Aunt Berg and so everything kind of changes from there. So then, And then the last thing that I finished in March was a book that I was listening to on audiobook all the way through March and that is Miss Muriel Matters by Robin Wainwright and this is really good. So it's a history book, it's a biography of Miss Muriel Matters who was an actress and elocutionist from South Australia um, in the 1800s who became one of the foremost suffragists, suffragists not suffragettes so much in Britain. So she came over, went over from Australia and got caught up in the suffrage cause. Um, and one of the things she is most famous for is she was the first woman to ever make a speech in the House of Commons because she chained herself to the grill that separated the ladies gallery from the House of Commons. And so they couldn't stop her. <laughs> um, but she did a whole bunch of other stuff. Like she was massively involved and she eventually evolved from being just in the suffrage movement into, she was very much interested in dealing with poverty and dealing with social issues and education of children. Um, she was a pacifist in World War One. Um, and she was very much into the doing something practical. She moved on from making all these speeches as an elocutionist, 
to doing practical things. For example, she had Montessori teach training. She was one of the first people to get that and started teaching children in poverty in the slums of London um, using this new method. Um, and she was, she was just, she, honestly, she was pretty damn amazing and she was Australian. So uh, this was a biography, biography of her, which I read via audiobook, which was a really good listen. Um, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And yeah, those were the seven things that I read in uh, March. So hopefully, maybe things will go a bit better in April this month. And my life's just gone. So I will see you all again really soon. Bye.